this is it. This is my happy place right here. I want to eat that. Great thing is, it's only seven o'clock in the morning. Wow, a couple different types of meat. I got a little bit of steak and some grilled pork belly. On top, some scallion sauce, a little bit of chicharron, fried pig skin, drizzle some chilies on top. Raised deep barbecue gods for this. I don't even know what I love more. The sweet, smoky, delicious, juicy beef, or that scrumptious, fatty, lightly charred and crispy pork belly, or just this glorious bed of rice that the meat is sitting on top of and where all that juice is just soaked into every single grain. Or the fact that this is available right now at seven o'clock in the morning, and I'm pretty sure they've been here since about five or six. It's just a glorious pork cherry on top of this magnificent meaty breakfast cake. The char on this meat is the best part. Look at that. Little fat, little crunchy bits of char. From flavor to texture, this thing's got it all. Oh my God. I could have got a soft boiled egg on this. Don't make my mistake if you come here. Get the egg. My neighbor has it. That thing looks like the sunrise I needed to see this morning. And if all the meat over rice ain't enough for you, you get a little cup of blood soup. Yeah, nothing like a little blood in the morning. Like I said, it's only seven o'clock in the morning. Long food day ahead of us. But this is my last day here in Cambodia. So, gonna make the best of it. I'm gonna miss how convenient this is. By the way, just as a tip, uh, here in Cambodia, you can use American dollars or you can use local money or a combination of both. So if I knew that, I wouldn't have exchanged anything. It's probably just much easier if you bring a bunch of small bills, especially when you're riding the tuk-tuk. All right, meeting up with my buddy Benedict again today. There he is. Yeah, there's Hi. Good morning. All right, big food day. Let's do there it. will be a lot of food this morning. That's why I like this guy. This is where we're gonna go get coffee. This is called a lomp pao. It's like a donut as well, but with sesame and it's made with rice flour. So this is gonna have a little chewy texture, I'm assuming. And it's brown compared to the yotel, the, I'm calling it yotel, but the local fried donut uh, because it's got palm sugar inside. I love this. And this goes with most pastries here in Cambodia. It's gonna be chewier because of the added rice flour. And it's always gonna have that nice, subtle sweetness from the palm sugar. Again, there's a really good kind of sweetness. And of course, awesome sesame aroma. And you can dip it inside the coffee. I only drink coffee when I have a donut. This is great because it's a little salty. So you get a little saltiness and sweetness together. And this thing is so much more dippable. Most people have donuts with their coffee. I have coffee with my donuts. Got some ginger cooked with pork, some beef jerky, dried fish. You wouldn't think you could eat that much pure ginger in one bite and still like what you're eating. The texture is almost like a bamboo shoot. It's got that nice crunchy texture and the ginger flavor is not like 
overwhelming. It's not like you're taking a bite of raw ginger and you're like, oh my God, this thing is killing my tongue. Not at all. It's got the nice ginger aroma. It's not trying to murder you like this much ginger typically does. And there's little bits of uh, lop chow mixed inside, little bits of uh, sausage. That gives out this great aroma. Southeast Asia does jerky really, really, really well. And it's not just dry, like US and American jerky is just like, it's just dry and salty. But here is chewy. Little bits of palm sugar gives it a slightly nice sugary flavor. And it's aromatic. Like when you're chewing it, it's not that it's just your tongue that's happy. Your other senses are lighting up as well. Dry fish. Anytime I have a chance to eat dry fish, I do it because I love the texture. It's chewy, salty, but such a nice, rich flavor. The more I eat, my happiness level just rises. We got a green curry noodle and a red curry noodle. So this is the green curry, banana flour, cucumber. The yellow is uh, turmeric and this is ginger. That's bloody insane. It's a thicker curry, so it grabs onto that noodle extremely, extremely well. I'm not usually a fan of banana flour because I feel like it tastes like, a, like you bit into a banana peel. Right here, the crunch of it actually goes pretty well with this curry. This curry itself is amazingly delicious. It's so smooth, a little creamy. You gotta add the spice, a little citrus from the lime. Wow. This is so aromatic and coconutty. You can add the chilies in it, which I already did, but if you want a little extra kick, that's not for beginners, trust me. The red curry is sweeter, sweeter for sure. I feel like I like this one better. Nice crunch from the sprouts, the cucumbers and everything. And the curry is a little less creamy. So this one is a little more soupy. The curry is absorbed by the noodles so well. This is such a flavorful noodle dish. The noodle texture is gonna be a little softer than you will find at uh, one of the beef noodle places, but that flavor is unbeatable. I just come here and get one of each. This is one of my favorite things in this country. Oh my God. These little coconutty, fluffy cupcakes with coconut milk on top. This thing, if you love anything that's fluffy and sweet and extremely, extremely aromatic, this is your jam. This is just really the fluffiest, airiest, bounciest, the coconuttiest cake you can find in the land. Biting into that, it's really biting into like a sweet, fluffy pillow. It's so chewy and the coconut flavor is just deliciously overwhelming. And it's not overly sweet. It's just got that goodness I was talking to you about. Eating that, it's, it's like the food gods appeared on earth and just give you a kiss on the lips. That's how sweet and delicious it is. Just walk around. When you see these ladies with like a thousand little cups in a steamer, that's what they're cooking. Get you some. So the area that we were in is actually called the Old Market. So this is a area where right early in the morning you got noodle vendors you got meat grilled meats rice everything you could ever want for your day's delicious food you can find it here i mean this is still early in the day and everybody's out and the thing with cambodians is that um they don't do a lot of cooking at home so most of the stuff it's just bought on the street so these vendors get a lot of business by from people just, just showing up grabbing something for work for school or, you know, after work, coming home, grab something on the way. I love that culture. I love it. Cheap and good and fast. And you don't have to do the dishes. Wait, this is the this is the orange brought by the French. Yeah, from South Africa. And it's green, but it's actually really sweet. Yeah. From South Africa. Yeah. This is mainly used for juice, and this orange juice is very, very popular yeah. here in Cambodia. Uh -huh. See, what I like about this is that it's very refreshing. Yeah. It's not like overly sweet. You can actually drink this and, and feel like, oh, my thirst is quenched. I'm like, if I drink orange juice in the States, I'm like, man, I got so much so much sugar in my mouth, it's kind of <laughs> sticky, you know? It feels like almost there's water in here, but there's not. No, no water. It's just water. so 
like it's just so bloody refreshing. Right now, going into the other side market. This market is it's very much it's super super local. You're not gonna find many stores in here. So this place is there's tons of wholesale. You buy things in bulk here. This is basically Nom Pins Sam's Club or Costco. I mean, look at this. Like a 50 pound bag of Tide. I mean, this market really, it is like a giant Costco. You got rugs and detergent, houseware stuff, and also a ton of spices and tea, um, coffee, and everything is negotiated. So you're not gonna see a price tag on anything. So you offer a price, and this is why like really only locals come here because if you're not a local, probably getting ripped off. I'm now like trapped in this random aisle. Ugh. Oh, sorry. Someone should make a video game out of this called Cambodian Market. It should be like, like a guy trying to get out and you win if you see daylight. Only thing missing here is a shopping cart because there's so much stuff. I don't know how people carry this stuff out with them. Most Asian countries you go to, they're gonna have their own version of kanji. In China, the kanji in the north is sweet, kanji in the south is savory. Everywhere else in Asia, it's all savory. I mean, this one has a mix of meats. Got pork belly, heart, liver. There's some blood in here. Oh, oh man, this kanji is delicious. The rice cooked perfectly. Oh, melts in your mouth. You got the great crunch from the sprouts, from the scallions, huge chunks of meat, a little citrus from the lime. Again, that subtle sweetness that most Cambodian dishes have. It's just a well balanced bowl of kanji. Very meaty, savory, citrusy, sweet. It just satisfies every craving. Meat, veggies, rice, soup, whatever you're craving for. This thing basically covers it. I just love like sitting here. Look, sitting here in this alley, this lovely lady just cooked this magical bowl of kanji. And I'm just surrounded by locals just enjoying food, walking around. This is the experience I love having when I'm visiting a foreign country, a place I've never been before. This is it. This is my happy place right here. This is the kind of places I think about when I'm trying to golf really well. Thanks, Happy Gilmore. Little fermented rice balls, black rice and white rice, and alcohol. Oh, that is sweet. Um, let me know if I'm getting the Asian flush, okay? Whew. I'm a lightweight. I'm already feeling tipsy. Oh, I like the white rice one. Because that reminds me of the Chinese fermented rice. Fermented rice, for some reason, if you never had it before, has this amazingly chewy texture. It makes the rice turn into like a little ricey sponge. So it absorbs so much of whatever you're trying to soak it in. I don't usually intake much alcohol, so if you see me running down the street with my underwear on my head after this, you'll know why. This alley has so much good food to eat. What is it? Oh, waffles? Cambodian waffle. Looks like a regular waffle, but as with other flour-based products in this country, Rice flour is always added, so expecting a chewy texture. And it did not disappoint. It's gonna be mochier, chewier than a regular waffle. Again, a little simple palm sugar makes everything, everything that much better. I'm telling you, Mary Poppins is right. But instead of just medicine, spoonful of sugar makes everything go down better. Ooh, nice little bits of coconut in there too. Yeah. All sorts of hidden surprises here. So these are the same noodles I had yesterday at Central Market. And this is already, like as of yesterday, one of my favorite things to eat in Cambodia. 
I love every single aspect of that. If this was a girl, I'd be popping a question already. Just the most perfect bite on noodles. First of all, the noodle texture is so incredibly chewy and nice. The mouth feels out of this world. A little bit of palm sugar for the sweetness, a little egginess, just to make it a little bit more creamy. Nice chunks of meat in here, and you mix it with a little bit of vinegar, a little bit of chilies to balance it out. It just becomes an overwhelmingly happiness-inducing bite. And again, what I love most is that char flavor because that cooking surface is so hot. And when that happens, when you're stir frying noodles, you can taste the fire and that flavor. You can't get that everywhere because a lot of times when you're stir frying this at home or something, the heat is just not that good. Only on extremely hot surface do you get that great char smoky flavor. And this plate of noodles has so much of that. This is probably my favorite noodles here in Cambodia. Love it. Just like a good marriage. The longer you spend with it, the longer you're eating it, the longer you're chewing it, the better it gets. It's like a little Cambodian freshly made ice cream cone or a wafer, wafer cone. This would be amazing when it's wrapped around a creamy scoop of ice cream. Cambodian soy milk. So a lot of the Chinese people actually live in Cambodia, and of course this is a very Chinese influenced drink. That's from fresh soybeans for sure. You can taste it. It's very smooth, but at the same time, it just tastes like you're chewing on a soybean. Oh my God, this green bean thing is crazy. It's very thick, like super thick. You should almost be scooping this thing up with a spoon. They're very grainy, so this is a little less refreshing. The green bean and the red bean are like soups. Oh my God, this is just, tastes like a grass drink. Not a super fan of this, because I'm, I'm usually not a super fan of anything that's ridiculously healthy, which I'm sure this is, because this tastes like it could extend my life. And that's not usually things I put in my body. I probably should, but I don't. This is called a pig feet cake. This is what this lady's been frying. And on top, peanuts, you got jicama, if this is a doughy food item, is made with rice flour too. Oh, there's some other beans in here as well. This is not at all what I expected. For some reason, I thought it was gonna be like really sweet. The jicama is a little crunchy, and for some reason, it reminds me of a turnip. The shell is very, very crispy outside. And it's like extremely tender and starchy because of the beans. I mean, it's good. I almost feel like this is something you gotta dip it in some chili sauce almost because it's a bit oily. I feel like some chili sauce, maybe a bit of vinegar will completely offset that. It makes this more balanced and more delicious. On its own though, Texture is nice. I just really wasn't expecting it to be savory. And it's so crazy eating in these little alleys because it's actually a really sunny day. You can see just like the sliver of sunshine, but in this alley, it's almost like a whole different world. It's like I'm on an underground food journey right now. I like it. Fried banana. You know about a rule when it comes to bananas. If you go to any country, if it's fried or grilled on a food stand, you have to get it. It's an international law. Man, this banana is huge. Huge. Looks like a massive fried piece of fish. So this is the fried banana. Oh my God. Like seriously, it is just massive. Very, very, very crispy on the outside. Eating a fried banana on a tuk-tuk. Does it get more local than this? Oh my. You hear that crunch? I mean, it's loud here. On the streets with cars everywhere, construction. But you should have still heard that crunch. This is a great, Right, but it's so airy. It's like a banana cave. They flatten the banana so inside it's just nice and airy. So it's got a superb crunch. This is crazy. Okay. That's a great fried banana. It's probably the crunchiest fried banana I've ever had. We're at a local wet market now, and it's really cool to go to a particular city and see where the locals shop and the kind of produce that they get. And this market, it's got, look at this, Towers of Sugar King. 
which I love. You can tell this is where the locals come. This is where they gather their ingredients for the kitchen. This is like a typical Asian grocery store is what this is. You got produce, vegetables, fish, seafood, chicken, pork. And this might be a little overwhelming to people who's never seen something like this before. Like I grew up in a household where my mom literally butchered things right in front of my face. So yeah, that's why I'm a little traumatized. But that's what we were used to seeing uh, when you live in Asia is markets like this, where everything is laid out in front of you. Few things are refrigerated. It's just all out in the open. And that's because they are that fresh. Wow, it's a mochi donut. Yep. Super crispy on the outside. And this is palm sugar. It's a little sticky, but I think there's gonna be a little crunch with this as well. This will definitely be Homer Simpson approved. If you never had a mochi donut before, go get one. When the dough has a little rice flour, the chewy texture and the mouthfeel is just so much superior to a regular donut. If you love donuts, gotta give this a try. This one is stuffed with mum bean. The mumping is a little starchy. I feel like I still like the plain donut much better because the starchy bean paste doesn't distract you from just the great texture of the donut itself. It's still good though. Just like when it comes to regular donuts, I like a regular glazed donut instead of a stuffed donut. We're in a local restaurant that serves beef stew and one thing to notice when you're in a restaurant in Cambodia, if you look on the ground, you see like all these paper napkins everywhere, even though there are trash bins. Basically what this means is that it's kind of like burping in France. Like it's a sign of the food is good and people are just wiping their mouth and throwing it on the ground. And apparently that's like widely accepted, even though there's trash cans everywhere. So yeah, uh, I guess if you drop a napkin on the ground, it's a good thing here. Ooh. The beef stew, huh? Oh man, that's the best piece of meat right there. This is the meat that's right on the bone. Man, that's gonna have a little cartilage in there as well. This is the beef stew, but I like the beef stew I've had in the US where, you know, there's a lot of potatoes, a lot of carrots. This thing is just 99% beef. I mean, it is just super loaded with meat. Almost, dare I say, too overloaded, if there is such a thing. I feel like this is like the Affirmative action of vegetables. Just is this here for statistics? But the beef looks amazingly tender. Oh, this is crazy beef stew. Oh no. Couple of observations. The beef is not gonna be the most tender you ever had. Wait a minute. There's different cuts of beef in here. Alright. This chunk is gonna have a lot of lean meat and tendon. Oh my god. That thing is softer than my dumpling plushie. My dumpling plushie is soft. There's a couple pieces of beef in here. It's a little bit chewy and it's really lean, but it has an intense beefy flavor. Then there are other pieces in here with a little bit of fat, a little bit of tendon that will just completely melt on your tongue like a snowflake. It's almost like too much good beef flavor in here. This is definitely something you should eat with some noodles with a little bit of carbs, a little bit of starch, dare I say. It's just a little too flavorful. It's just a massive bowl of beef. That's all it is. Oh man. This is definitely a place I would want to come when I lose all my teeth in the future. There is hope for me. When I'm 90, I have no teeth, but I still crave meat. This is where I'll be. Wait, this, this is a, you're, you're telling me this, this is a snack. Yeah, dude. That's you guys, you, you guys are intense. I love these people. Seriously, <laughs> like this in any culture would be like, once you eat this, it's nap time. But here, you eat this and then you go out for dinner. Hey man, thanks yeah. so much for showing me around. Yeah, thanks so much for coming, really. Yeah. It's been so great. This man. guy knows a lot about, about, about the local food scene, so. But yeah, no, I learned so much from you and Thanks for all the great places. I, I, I gotta go eat some more, so you're, you're full. I'm really full. Alright, all right. take care, buddy. Alright, before I leave this country, I gotta go have one more fish amok. And apparently, this is one of the best restaurants they have it in. 
although uh, <laughs> this is a very touristy place. My first option was closed, like I think permanently. So this will have to do. Here it is, my second attempt by eating fish amok here in Cambodia. This looks more traditional. Served on a banana leaf, big chunks of fish, coconut milk on top. And this is actually not a, a super local food because this was actually the food of royalty back in the day. This is way different um, than the first amok I had a few days ago. The chunks of the fish is much bigger. I feel like the sauce is thicker, less watery than that first time I had this dish. Very, very aromatic. That familiar sweetness of the palm sugar shines through. Pieces of fish is nice and tender. You definitely taste the lemongrass, the chilies, all that great aroma and spices of the curry. For some reason though, I don't really understand. This dish is supposed to be steamed. The traditional way of making it is supposed to be steamed, but the two places I went to, the last place and this place, I'm pretty sure this is fried too. I feel like this place, the curry is much nicer. You can actually taste the big chunks of fish. And this particular version is incredibly meaty and fragrant. I think this is definitely better than the last one I had, but I still haven't had one where it's like a traditionally steamed, where the curry is supposed to be, this is why I read, the curry is supposed to almost be like a paste-like consistency. And the first one I had was more watery. This one is less watery, it's more thick, but it's still not what I thought it would be like. I mean, it's a good dish, but I feel like it's still missing something, at least for me, that, that puts this into legendary status. I mean, to me, it just tastes like a really good dish of fish curry. I mean, it's for sure way more aromatic and complex than regular fish curry, but it's really not all that mind-blowing for me. So I don't know whether I'm just not eating the correct version of this, or, or maybe this dish just isn't my thing. I mean, it's a good dish, don't get me wrong. It's a dish I feel like everybody should try coming to this country, but that's kind of it for me. It's just a really good dish. All right, I gotta finish up and go pack. I just want to say, this has been an incredible three days in this country. Didn't really know what to expect coming into Cambodia, but as soon as I landed, I remember going through the visa process. Like It was like midnight, but people were still smiling and being courteous and nice, and, and that was a pretty good first impression of this country. And having been here for three days, I, I can't really give you a deep assessment of Cambodia or Phnom Penh, but, but I'll sum up my impression in four words. Great food, better people. The food actually shocked me. The amount and variety of street food. There's morning markets, day markets, night markets, Russian markets, central markets. It's markets everywhere. And you're always able to find something interesting to eat no matter what time it is. And the people I met, from the tutu drivers to the cooks to the stand owners, I love it when I'm filming in a country where they see a camera and instead of shying away, they actually smile and they're happy to be on. You know how rare that is in the Asian countries? Bottom line, great first trip here in Cambodia. I wish there was more time like I explained before. I didn't just come for three days because I only want to spend three days here. I've been traveling for the last three months. I need to go home. I got another big trip coming up. I can only spend three days here. So this was a short first trip in Cambodia. Definitely will not be the last. I mean, there's so much history and culture and amazing things to see here. And I really can't wait till the next time I'm back. So now it's back to Seattle for about 10 days to take care of some errands and, and personal stuff and then Egypt and Pakistan. All right guys, I'm gonna put as much information as possible of the places I went to today down below because honestly, we just went to a bunch of different markets and I'll probably have trouble telling you exactly what stalls I went to, but I'll do my best. As always, thank you all so much for watching and until we eat again, I'll see you later.